Hello and welcome to the Inside Scoop. Hello, hello. The scoop is on again this time, but uh, we decided to talk a little bit about pop culture and the different things that people like, I guess, and how they like it and why they like it. Let's say I wasn't considering myself too much of a pop music lover or anything. I don't think I've ever I've ever had this phase. People say you have to have that phase of like loving some sort of a popular thing because you know at some point in your life you were really affected by the peer pressure and everyone was liking that artist or that new thing and then you know you felt like an outsider if you didn't like it your friend group would be rejecting you but i don't know yeah that's only depends on your friend group though <laughs> yeah you, you're right it's like i what if and what if your friends are outsiders too what if they're more of a anyway if 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 you don't find yourself in a popular group, yeah, you're most likely going to go and look for social interactions anyway. That means you're most likely going to find other people who aren't being upset, accepted into any other, you know, big social group. All that group. chick stuff, all that, you know, up-to-date. Yeah, memes, something like that. Fashion. Memes, I mean... <laughs> TV shows. <laughs> oh, these oh, memes. memes. I'm, in a, I'm like a chat, and that chat just comes up. With it. These guys share the weirdest memes ever and some we and some memes are just now so boomer weird. stuff started there's so many boomer memes yeah okay boomer and I, yeah the okay boomer stuff at the first time i've heard it, it was like two days ago i just looked at it and said why is there so many boomer type of stuff around us and then i realized oh this may be just a rising new meme or something you know? i mean if you don't get it it's more like uh some older generation person uh dubbed the boomer it's so like what is it like the the baby boomer generation? Baby, yeah, basically. baby boomer generation. And yeah, but why this meme? Because usually they and say why now? Stupid that's not relevant to millennials, and they make fun of millennials about it. And like, okay, boomer, you don't know about <laughs> us. You don't know. You don't know about what you know. What younger generations have to deal with. So don't. Why are you complaining about it? Yeah, but why now? You don't understand it. Why you? this meme just appeared from? I don't even know. Like it's satire, and like any, it's always been like that. Any, you know, like the word okay. Mm-hmm. That means like all correct, but yeah. the, K, the K is like a correct with a K. <laughs> yeah, and that was like a medieval thing. Like yeah, mm-hmm. O L L, all correct. It's not. This isn't a joke. Is that's what actually OK means? Yeah, all correct. Yeah, yeah I, I've heard about it, but then like <laughs> this just randomly started popping in right now, and then maybe maybe it's being influenced by also some popular um, internet personas. We'll say. Where, um, yeah, it was funny 2017, 18 type of stuff. Do you remember Uganda, uh, Uganda Knuckles? Oh, yeah, damn, dude. It was one of the, but then let's say, and I'll name the guy PewDiePie. Yeah, he's the, I mean, he's the guy on YouTube. He had the most, uh, the biggest amount of subscribers, the most influence, especially in right, the let's younger, not, let's not piss anyone off, then. the younger generation. Well, I, He's I don't got care some faithful if people. yeah, okay. I don't care if some if some other guy says okay. I don't agree that PewDiePie has a lot of kids as it all as his audience. You know, like mm-hmm. well, yes, we have to face the facts. He does, and he yeah. has a say. And kids are much more impressionable. Yeah, and exactly, he should take it cautiously and then he he's being doing that he's doing it now yeah he's doing that yeah no, not, not back then <laughs> not back then well it d- depends on what back then means yeah but. and this thing just appeared also like you know maybe someone someone made some weird random thing like that and then i think it, like everything was uh born in the vr chat and everything started there and then this this meme started going around there more and more people found about it but it was like he publicized it too because when you look at the his meme review videos he's he's doing like a couple of million at least you know so that that starts to spread somewhat and then these kids you know the sudden liking i mean i i even watched one of those yeah it's like it's funny it's weird and it's stupid but and it's also racist but it's like it's so dumb that it's funny and then that's why how like the meme culture itself just appears i guess yeah. this is what like more and more people join in and even though i don't consider myself you know like i don't follow the memes a lot, but when i see it i was like i just so you're saying you're just not laugh a yeah like i'm not too much but i like look at it and i just start laughing like what is this crap this is weird but this is like i like wow it's okay. funny it's satire yeah it, it, see that's the thing yeah 
And I guess the the meme culture exists nowadays, no? Is it like yeah. the people just keep producing me- more and more memes? And it- I mean, there's always the best always rise to the top, you know. Mm. It's just uh, memes are always. <laughs> Wait, let me develop that thought a bit more. You know, memes. Not everyone gets them because they're always like usually inside jokes, right? They're like they're, they're related to something that you have to have prior information about them. That, that, that niche is what makes it so funny because it's like a secret communication. Yeah, because it's funnier. You show her friends and your friends just look at you. What do you mean? And you're like, hi, you don't get it, but I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. Well, it's like that okay hand and got, got Yeah, got and then you. You know, someone like, else, someone else sees it. And even though that you don't know this guy and he's like, oh, I get it. And you're like, oh, yeah, I can relate to you, you know? Yeah. Like, you were looking, you're looking for, for some way to relate to some other people because yeah. anyway, you, you're looking for social interaction so because like the more obscure meme is it's always and the the more sure you are that this person has the same interests as me and Mm. i can i can relate with them and then you know it's a kind of kindred spirit kind of thing yeah it's a good it's a good filter nowadays yeah but you know sometimes it bits it gets so convoluted that it's uh it becomes more a segregational kind of thing like hey you're uh you don't know about these memes or like you don't like these memes so you're not part of my meme yeah <laughs> yeah not you're not in my meme group you know yeah. you're not a memer dude even though i'm like in, in these chats yeah but some of these memes are like just uh japanese anime girls doing weird stuff yeah it's i don't like, know why that's on YouTube. i don't i don't and see i I don't understand. It's like Nazi memes, rage. Like the more offensive it is, the funnier it is. Apparently, for them at least, well, it's people. like, or maybe that's just that friend group or something. But they're like, I don't know, dude. It's weird. I don't. I don't understand it. The memes themselves. Like, yeah, you know, there are some some which are actually really funny, which are like non-offensive at all, which are just like some casual stuff, you know. I've seen this uh, this one new <laughs> new thing. I don't think I've shared it with you, but so the meme sort of a goat, not like a. I don't know if it's like memes, jokes. Well, the humor evolved uh, to a certain format, where everything is not you know not like a, only a joke anymore. Not like just uh, some. It's more it's more of a this picture with text uh, type of format nowadays. So anyway, it's like. Someone asks you, do you have any talents? And you're like, just... <laughs> and then there's pic- this picture of uh, like a fire, uh, you know, like this fireplace in the middle. And then there's like literally just three seats around it, around the fire. And then there's a picture of that guy just sitting there and all the smoke is going his direction. And he sits on another one, all the smoke is on this direction. He goes on the other one, smoke is on. <laughs> like, well, I don't have any talents, but I sure do have one where like, the most annoying things, mosquitoes or anything. If if I'm out with like people, I'm I'm the only guy to like get the the freaking stupid thing to to happen to me. So like mm. these things which are more relatable on on like a not like an insider level, but on on you know more of a general level, it they're more likely to spread too and i think i agree with those you know not those like nazi type of insider yeah type of cult stuff you know where someone says some some word like the racial do you know about a german nazi some sort of like a racial number which is like 1488 i don't know what which that is. is apparently a racial thing if you say it wow you mean really bad things because there's uh, this isn't like they used to give the the prisoners numbers instead of names well everyone usually gives prisoners names uh, numbers but this apparently means the 14 means some sort of a slogan of like 14 14 words which praises their own race and then 88 is because you know letter h is the eighth in the alphabet so it's like praising their leader so it's like hh you know something like that so if you say 1488 it's like you're basically just saying that oh our race is very like it's it's just it's very offensive apparently and then when i saw these numbers just thrown around everywhere it's like, first of all i just didn't understand like, well, what is this crap yeah i mean i totally get it with like and then china at least because like, i grew up more more close to that area and mm-hmm. like everyone jokes about uh Tietman square 
<laughs> that kind of stuff when you can't talk. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard about this thing, and yeah. it was like the first time. The first time I heard it was this week, actually. Yeah. I think on Monday or something, or even last week, and I was like, "What? Well, what is that?" <laughs> and then some guy, one of my friends, is like. Well, it's some sort of a square or something, yeah. Where it's and a, then Chinese people can't talk about that, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a location where a horrible, horrible massacre occurred, where a bunch of students were basically protesting about uh, corruption, or, or I, I don't remember the specifics, but it was against the government, and there was a horrible, horrible massacre where like oh, thousands and thousands of students died. Um, and apparently, it's prohibited to, to talk square. about it's that. It's prohibited stuff. to talk about it. Yeah. So there was a joke where. Because it's so horrifying that you know you can't you can't talk about it and you can't have it on the Chinese internet and <laughs> if the Chinese people are messing with you online, there's an easy way to get rid of them. Oh yeah, talk and about Tiananmen Square, dude. They're that like, guy talked. Uh, so so yeah, I didn't started finish. Started off with like some Japanese guy. Yeah, I didn't finish, but this this what the the thing was that he was playing some sort of a game and then yeah. to just like. I think it's League of Legends or something. Yeah. And then they drop that in the chat and then they start seeing how people disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is, they have this copy pasta Damn. in 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 Chinese where they just post about uh the the details of Tiananmen Square. <laughs> it's just stupid. Like these things which actually are like wrong and some people you see because they don't have that experience. They don't have that cultural education on on that stuff let's say me yeah i have never been there i wasn't one of the protest i am less likely to you know face the action of the chinese government if mm -hmm. i mention that square yeah so i would be the perfect candidate to misunderstand what it means and just start you know like shouting this crap all around yeah it's, yeah and I would be one of the guys who don't understand what it means. But for someone who's actually, you know, Chinese, well, I don't understand what that means. And, well, it's just, you know, a general example that there's way more things like that where someone cannot relate, cannot really relate to someone else. And that's where all of these racial jokes come because uh, some people really take it to heart, you know, when... Even you're joking around, you know, like these all these Nazi stuff. Yeah, like something like that. It's like people just joke around that mm -hmm. crap on the internet. There, there are some people who actually take it to heart because this is this is offensive. This is really offensive. But it's a sort of crossing the border, crossing the line, so far that it's well, it's supposed to be taken as like stupid joke or like some retard joke, you know, like. Yeah. But it's it's well, it, it's still not good to to joke it. I know. People should just take take it back a, a bit, slow down, <laughs> because even though you can hide behind, you know, the anonymity of the internet, you still shouldn't, you know, produce memes like that. I mean, everyone has their own view on that kind of thing, right? The reason they they do go into memes and the reason they develop them and the reason, like why they disperse them because there are people who genuinely get off on you know other people getting angry about it and they're called trolls right mm, mm -hmm. and maybe some others only are looking for sensationalism just like journalism yeah yeah if your meme makes it to the first page of reddit or something you did a good job you know you got popular whatever you... i mean you should not nazi memes but <laughs> you, it's yeah sometimes yeah, but get, i mean yeah some sort of a offensive but offensive for some people we'll say meme not something that is a taboo around here you know like nazi or anything like that um well i'm not sure how we're doing with this podcast because you know we've mentioned this word so many times today on this podcast oh yeah we're gonna face some action from spotify <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, I just have to is this explicit content we have to google is yeah, this explicit uh, content we'll have to like figure it out if we're actually m mentioning that this episode is explicit because some words yeah, I mean, we some talk about censorship Tiananmen Square and <laughs> Nazis but this so. is ex is it explicit like it, there's no swear words in that and it's supposed to be a podcast about I mean know, it's dark history though dark history but if we don't talk about dark history are we ever gonna rise above that and you know learn from the mistakes of, of our uh, past countries make mistakes and they don't like to show it 
But if you want to talk yeah. about the horrors of whatever other countries done, then there are things out there. No one is perfect. No one. But everyone should admit that they made mistakes. And if they don't, well, then everyone else should notice that and, you know, reflect well, I mean, on it. It's stuff in the past. And if you always bring it up, then, you know, people will never forgive you for it. Right. Germany now, Japan now, China now is different to what it is in the past. Right. Granted, China is still uh, uh, still a brutal place to be. But you have to admit that the ethics have evolved and perhaps the culture is different to what you understand. Yeah, for and sure. There are, there are definitely differences that you can't, you know, take a Western philosophy and bring it to the East or other continents. But still having these uh, discussions. I, well, in my opinion, I think they should be out there. Like, you know, even though the country has moved on, but if we just, you know, bury it in the ground and forget about all of this that happened, you know, what if we make same mistakes because we forgot that this happened and this led to bad consequences? And well, that's where the history books are there. Uh, might have been written by the victors and changed to whatever whims they wanted, but it, mm. they're still there. Yeah, okay. I mean... All this history is still out there and you can learn about it, but the platforms don't want to endorse it because it seems like it's it, in, the, in the sense of it. These atrocities were done by political ideas. They were fueled by them. And if you try to spread its ideas, then you either have to take a tone to one side or the other. And of course, no one wants to help spread the idea of whatever <laughs> caused the massacre mm -hmm. and it's always going to reflect bad on whatever organization did it right so if, if you're going to try and host it then if you want to talk about Tiananmen Square then of course China's going to be angry at you yeah yeah reflect bad on the mm. yeah you're right about uh, especially stuff with Hong Kong going on right now mm. about spreading the word you talk about spreading it yeah remembering our last episode when we talked about controversies and conspiracies and everything Maybe you're right. Maybe the the more you talk about it, the the louder it gets. The more people know, the more people learn about it. But you shouldn't leave this up to the judgment of the individual people themselves to decide if it's good or bad. Because one person may hear it and may he may actually you know understand it in the proper way that you want him to understand. He his mentality would would be well. I don't like this. I don't agree with this. I don't like that this happened and I am going to ensure that this will not happen in the future. Well, it's just more like he doesn't like that this happened, you know. There's some other person who hears about this incident, even though it's like an objective uh, news report or anything about this, he would maybe praise it and say, oh, that's very good. Yeah, I, I want to you know, fight for it. I want more of these things to happen. So, yeah, it's a risk when you make things public, I guess. Oh, that's the risk of a broadcaster. Uh, it's a bit dark. You can't always talk about what you want. Censorship. You're getting censored. Yeah. And stuff. Mm -hmm. huh. So, let's try to move topic then. Yeah. Something back to... As we, we touched a bit on the development and uh, on m not making mistakes from the past. Yeah. All these cultures that bring you up. How, how do they change you? Ah... Uh. How do they? How do you develop to where you are? Yeah, I think that's what we mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. How memes affect you? <laughs> how memes affect you? Oh my god! Imagine being a, a seven-year-old dude scrolling Reddit after like oh, whatever yeah, things. However many years we, you know, imagine us being old now, dude. <laughs> that's trippy. Well, because well, uh, we don't, we can't imagine what's gonna come afterwards. You know, we're already seeing the younger generation already, you know, forming, but. It's so hard when you're young. You're like, well, I don't, I don't see anything else new because we are up to speed with what new things are coming out. You know, the social media platforms. Yeah, like they gotta we, catch up and experience, and that's no fault of theirs. Like all these older generations always no. look down on the younger because mm. they haven't learned as much. They haven't seen what they've seen, and they think that whatever applied to them in the past, they think applies still now. And uh, this is probably a topic everyone's heard about already. So, yeah. development. How does that change someone? Being born and then being the first thing you've ever seen. The first things you've interacted with. Yeah. So, you, like, you mentioned something with Legos, right? Or in yeah, Germany. Yeah, like how everything you are exposed to. 
um, changes and shapes you and how well this is one of those stories when you know someone said and then I heard it and then okay. someone's insight that in Germany let's say uh, they had and have uh, you know toys and usually Christmas uh, gifts for for children for boys uh, like constructors of Lego toys you know those like where you DIY type of stuff yeah, yeah I mean there's a lot of those from Germany yeah yeah when you construct you create something you make even I've and I've been gifted those like I think I, I remember having I've had a huge box of Legos man yeah I mean even like, like little kinder eggs those are full of toys you have to build yourself yeah and these little toys like something like that but but so maybe what the idea of of this is and maybe this is you know government controlling you government shaping the way they want your population to I be mean. but do you know what Audi is do you know what Volkswagen is do you know what BMW is what is all these have you heard of a term called German engineering you know <laughs> as they <laughs> precision German precision engineer. yeah exactly what words come to mind where you hear German engineering right it's usually precision well, they bring up and reliab reliability yeah durability and, and then how does that happen how does a you know a country just do you think they you know hire the best engineers from all around the world just like okay we want German engineering to be the best engineer in the world so we just hire all the nations you know like best engineer no they somehow shape their country into having a sufficient amount of engineers that are able to produce very high quality products and high quality engineering miracles and um, everything starts in the childhood this is thing like you know culturally they have uh, a lot of toys a lot and it, it led it led to like build these construction objects so they like to make their woodworking and then it, it bleeds into their their you know their their their, their children stuff so all these people who are born <laughs> yes people are born uh all these kids grow up grow up with like legos and construction stuff and they you know it develops their spatial intelligence right mm -hmm. their 3d their imagination of a 3d object yeah and it it, it really helps in like engineering right mm -hmm. and think about how how many, <laughs> how many other intelligence there are so like in America, what is the common thing that they see? People are given sports toys, mm. maybe, or games. Nowadays, you see a lot of people getting, you know, phones instead. Yeah. yeah. Right? And the, at, the, at a younger age. And they grow up developing, uh, rather than these, you know, 3D spatial intelligence, instead they develop themselves into be, to understanding how the phone works and how they can derive enjoyment from it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what's on the phone? Of course, it's connected to the internet. And that's, you know, everyone knows about the internet, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's in there? It's full of things they could never imagine about. And once they discover it, they want to be good at it. You know, yeah. they want to have a social presence. They want to be good at socializing on the internet. And it's that it ties back into that pop culture thing. Mm. You know, understanding the the younger generation how they how they love Fortnite because you know it's a generational thing they want mm -hmm. to tie into it and then when people can recognize that they can develop it themselves so like uh the the, the company that develops Fortnite they put in all these dances and stuff and all these kids are following them now yeah it might seem like sure oh people are trying to control them no they're trying to fit the needs of their customers right mm -hmm. and it, is that a fault of theirs because yeah. people like what they they're, what they're doing yeah and it's just say. as the the new sonic redesign oh uh, yeah yeah i've been talking to a like a character designer back in summer mm. i'm not much like into like what all the new movies are coming out and stuff but so i've heard this there's this pikachu movie there's this sonic movie there's like all these characters were like being computer generated and stuff and mm -hmm. and then he just you know mentioned it to me and then i said well what do you mean like bad sonic design what is sonic i said i i know a game i've played sonic a lot you know like on my phone and then all these uh, and he said well no there's a movie coming out and i'm really angry i was like what's wrong i said well well they it's really nasty like uncanny this is this this sonic looks weird this looks bad this this is not how it's supposed to look. I'm like, what? Wait, what? Show me. What do you mean? 
And then I looked at it and I was like, ah, okay, I sort of get what you're saying because have you heard of a concept called the Uncanny Valley? No. No? The Uncanny Valley is uh, the valley that is created in a graph of familiarity to you and how human-like something is. So imagine Minecraft being... So X is familiarity and Y is... What? Human likeness human. is the X. Human like and fami- familiarity of like how familiar it, it seems it feels to you. Okay. And so imagine Minecraft being these blocky humans, and they're completely yeah. not human like, but they're still like some. And you and you like it. You're familiar. Like, oh, this is a person. I see. This is a human. This yeah. is know, this box. It has hands, like anything. Oh, imagine arms. some sort of. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Imagine some sort of like you know a, a I don't know cartoon character Mm -hmm. you can see his little legs like hands whatever ears big eyes or something and you like it you really like it you seem familiar with it you like oh i I love it you know like these plushy toys it's like a human homunculus yeah human but it's it's not human but you love it like you know like fandom and everything like everyone buying these plushy toys and uh, oh this is like you know even sonic yeah it's like he's he's a cute character yeah you know what sonic inherently like like the original hedgehog yeah Yeah, the original character design is rather cute and he's good you wow it's nice but then there's this little point a turning tipping point where it breaks around 80 percent of human likeness so like 50 percent it's like all the way almost the maximum yeah. like wow it's not human like so but something's it's so a little grossly too human but it's yeah. not human and enough. then it breaks and then it goes all the way down there so that's where the uncanny okay. valley is i think the sophia the self-thinking human robot and all these humanoid robots where you look yeah how companies try to put facial expressions into them and then you see this robot speaking but he's speaking like you know like just like expressing himself but because he doesn't have enough muscle in his face obviously because yeah. you know you can't just recreate it's every not single enough muscle. servos on it it's too complex it just does it oof, it just feels weird because they're trying to make a human and then after that obviously you know human likeness so like you're a human like so then after that valley everything just skyrockets back up yeah if you're a human perfectly replicate yeah well if you can perfectly replicate it or Or if it's the person is a human like you like like yeah i'm familiar with you i know that you're a human and i can yeah maybe yeah i'm human (laughs) well yeah (laughs) that's that's what i'm saying well you know and so there's this uncanny valley and coming back to the sonic character thing I could see it in there. Yeah, you can they... see these eyes, very, very human-like small eyes. Yeah. They they don't connect at all. If you see the actual original character, you see these big white eyes, which d- yeah. like a... It looks like big... It looks more like a, they're wearing a mask like or... Like one big eye or something. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's clearly, clearly wearing gloves because you have... You see these, you know... Yeah. It's like things sticking off his hand. And then in the... In the ca- in the freaking movie it's you know they separated the just, eyes yeah the, the eyes are small and separated they made the fur pop out yeah the hand is just just fur which is white it's like whoa why is he not wearing gloves he's just white fur yeah and then the his belly is also like when you look at and how the actual actual original character looks it's like a big wide blob and then big eyes and here's like small eyes and then the small white fur patch it's like yeah and it's it felt uncanny. From now, I'm, from what I'm hearing now, is that it's been redes- redesigned. Yeah, know? I've seen it. It, it. It's it goes a lot more to the original. Yeah. Oh, you've seen it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think I've seen just like a comparison image. But what does that suggest? That suggests whoa, these guys released a trailer for a movie, and then after half a year, they re-released the trailer for a movie. Yeah. Because they've gotten feedback. Which suggests to me that, you know, they didn't create the movie in the first place and then make a trailer. But they did their cheeky Hollywood technique, as always, yeah. Just freaking, let's make a trailer, let's see what people like. Spider-Man versus uh, Superman, no, they don't like that, okay, we need something else. Maybe, maybe, you know, some sort of Avengers 4, but like, some character dies and people don't like it. There's a rage, outrage on Twitter, but because... They're always listening because they want to appeal to the masses. They're like, oh, people actually don't like that. We have the budget. We still have two weeks till the premiere and stuff. We can refilm the whole movie. Like, who cares? We have the budget to do that. And they do that. It's like... Well, it's, it, not, it's not like they have to replace the entire thing because 
how how the you know these teasers these trailers usually work is that they they work to a certain amount until they realize that you know there's a working date or I mean there's a release date they know about and then they can release it right mm-hmm. and that's why they make the trailer but yeah, then but boom they just like it's a, it's a, they just have to replace the model and then change all the effects and the lighting which you know does take a lot of money and time but it's much easier than filming the entire thing again yeah but it uh, but i'm com- i'm talking about the, the the issue itself of you know hollywood but then okay i'm i'm starting to understand so it's a business it's some sort of a business like yeah. serving people if you if you don't like how your favorite character in the new superhero movie acted well you can go on twitter and just be angry i don't like it and then boom you know maybe something changes and then they just come up with something else you know they just remake it i mean usually when they try to change something it's because they don't understand the original audience that they come from or they understand it and they want to appeal more to a casual audience while trying to retain the original just like these uh, interactive netflix stories Something like that, where you watch a uh, where you watch a, a TV series or something, and then I think at e- at the end of the episode you can vote or whatever like that, or you can even watch and and choose the path. Basically, interactive yeah, stories. Choose your own adventure kind of deal. Choose your own kind of adventure, but it's yeah. a TV series of real people acting. What does that mean? Maybe well, you know, there's a cliffhanger, and then you get to decide if you want. You know, Jonathan to fall in love with Kate or no? I mean, those are like so like reality TV shows, aren't they? Like you, people vote, no. and you can you can vote people out. Those kind reality of reality TV shows, yes, but this is some completely yeah, yeah, I mean, different thing. Yeah, this yeah. is like I, I yeah, get, I, I, I do the same concept. Yes, so the I mean. same concept, but this is more well. Even the reality shows, they where do they come from? They come from a place where you know some people actually want to, you know, have a say. They want to be heard or something like that so i don't know man there's a huge topic on hollywood i think we could even dedicate like an episode to to that sometime about uh, but you it's don't more like rant territory than rant territory yeah we could research about it what, what, what do we have to gain about it though like i don't know hollywood i mean it would be an interesting movies, topic dude, and you, we could film. understand more about it movies and film yeah. is an art form you don't just go in there and re-release rewrite the whole freaking you know screenplay because someone said i don't like that spider-man did this it's not staying true to the art form itself of writing the screenplay producing a movie making it meaningful hiding a meaning in there the best movies touch you because there's a very very well thought out story and you follow the storyline watching it like the edge of your seat like oh my god what's gonna happen next and the story hooks you so good and then there's a plot twist there's something you know how like stories go but in this case it's like how good of a story can it be if they just reshoot the whole movie you know at the in the middle because some people said oh i want this movie to go this way this shouldn't have they should well amaze you you should go into the cinema and yeah. be amazed by that you know how that's how movies that's movies man yeah but it's you gotta understand that every person's gonna have their own opinion on it and if they might not agree with the playwright and perhaps the playwright could take that into consideration and if they do agree with the new opinion right that it might be a better way to do it objectively maybe in in their mind maybe yeah but talking about all these commercial movies i do agree with but especially those deep psychological ones where you know you you're just hooked all the all the way along yeah but you got to understand that yeah. it might not be the same for everyone not be because not everyone yeah. is going to be hooked in like that but yeah but you're not aiming to hook everyone with this kind of movie you know you i mean uh, yeah of course but the goal is that it, they want it to be popular they want it to be meaningful and if they could make a yeah. change that is meaningful in such a way or make the character more uh, yeah, well, in this case, a character faithful. more likable and more faithful to the original. Yeah, make, yeah, it, yeah. make the character portrayed more faithful to the character written, mm-hmm. then it would be ideal to change whatever they did. Yes, just I find it weird, you know, how, like, they do it now. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I guess we just have different opinions, and then that's completely fine, and it's just... You have I've been be... taught by, by a guy who... I've been taught by, like, a film professor, and we could... Yeah, we we should actually 
I, I get where you're coming get from. I'm just playing episode. devil's advocate because you got to understand other people's thoughts as well. Yeah, and I do want to understand that. At the same time, yes, I do. I do feel like you know, people who are fans of the series, they do enjoy the series just because you know some things. Like Game of Thrones, you know what happened with Game of Thrones? Like yeah. it was one of the one of the first first uh, TV series where you were shocked almost every episode. Like nah, no, you're getting you're start getting your was very slow. Hmm? The start was very very the start slow. was very slow. I don't recall it. It doesn't matter. You know, but no. you you do you know what I'm saying? Like you you get the main idea yeah. where you you get invested into a character. And then the season ends because the, the character died. And then now you think that there's no more meaning. There's no more. You get furious. I'm not going to watch anymore. Yeah, but that was the like, appeal, though, because yeah, the it's consequences it's so were real. But once it comes to the end game, you know, they can't really cut out characters like that, especially if they're going to be on a TV show and they're going to have them play as main characters. And then, you know, the actor has a high pay budget and yeah. there's all these other plays. But they stuff. actually did they cut them out <laughs> i was like shocked i mean but that's uh, it that, okay. okay yeah no spoilers but yeah, yeah yeah i don't know man but it i feel like it i think it's poorly executed and i think everyone there knew it <laughs> but it was shock. it was shocking and it was nice it was cool i guess was it's it? something different was yeah it nice i liked it it's like so so weird uh, but then i discussed with people about it and i think it was like, poorly 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 done really yeah and then you, the actress know, could tell I don't remember, dude. The actors could tell. I think the directors could even tell it by the interviews. I don't know. Don't remember it properly. It's been a long time ago. You're talking about season eight, right? One. So, oh, season one. Okay, I haven't see, watched. I only watched like five seasons. Or so. I'm just talking about okay, the if series it's, in okay, general. Okay, one to five, then that, yeah, it's, those, those are great. Talking about season one, where yeah, I'm, it I'm hits happy with as those. a series where people haven't seen stuff like that. Something comes on, and you start oh, all these characters. Well, yeah. I fell into the trap of the same thing. That's I, great. I like this character. I like this character. He's gone now. <laughs> well, spoilers, not spoilers, but not a surprise that characters die. And this, if you not even doing much research, just Googling about the series, it's one of those where, you know, just, you just let people go. <laughs> um, I mean, it, nice. these are the things with stories. Are, uh, really, a lot of stories try to make the end and the climax this apex right they're trying to make some clever twist and the story doesn't always need that and when the journey is that great already especially with game of thrones where it's already so so rich all this build up of sure it might be disappointing to be a little be more mediocre but when you have a twist that doesn't work it's just sad and it it makes the whole thing a joke at the end yeah, maybe you're right. Don't Sometimes know. clean and simple is a bit disheartening. It mm -hmm. isn't the best you could do. But if you can't do better, and if you know that, then don't do it. Mm. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Because if, if you want to be clever, you got to be really, really clever. And if you mess up in any way possible, it will fall apart. But I've seen so... I've, I've, dude, I've seen movies. They glue you to the screen and they're so well executed so well thought out that i, I yeah even because it was at a coherent yeah. vision from the top from the beginning to the end the this yeah. didn't yeah maybe you're right it's, well it's a tv series and a the movie TV series was movies, based off piece. the books and, mm. and yeah. the premise like the it was it was already changed from the beginning the the books and the, and the tv series is already different yeah i mean you're right we're talking about completely different things you know like tv series and a and a piece of art which was created by a direct uh, you know a director yeah. to, to I mean the, show off sort of certain idea the, the, so. the book series isn't even finished at this point <laughs> yeah, yeah but, well the guy um, the guy told uh, some people what happens well if he was to die just, no, just without finishing writing it <laughs> <laughs> so I know that but I'm not much of a fan of these you know that's when I was really debating watching game of thrones at all i mean it's a great show it, it's a great show yeah. but i wanted to get myself last season, uh, the last two seasons the... were not as good as the others sadly yeah well i yeah I, I just wanted to get myself acquainted with with more stuff like that and yeah you know. it's just very interesting world building deep character development yeah well popular culture thank you everyone for listening it's a uh, quite a drastic you know change and uh, cut to the episode and an end but I, I just feel like we should continue talking about 
stuff like that. I got a suggestion today from someone. He, he said, do you do you put a number by your episode? You know, like, how do I know if it's the third episode, the second episode? It's like, maybe we just want them to be self-standing. But then he said, well, but you can then have episode one, episode two, episode 2.1, 2.2, 2, you know, like some sort of a oh, very series. Fair, very fair. Where we could, as this being our fourth episode, we could have 4.1. And then next episode could be 4.2, where we just continue talking about the I popular culture. I mean, if we want to have a more cohesive conversation about it, one topic multiple times, or even revisit something, yeah, that could be great. And just expand more, because let's say now I would like to transition talking about my film professor, which I have uh, the, the warmest feelings for. He's like, he's such a... Damn. He sparked the love for, like, true art in film, especially. And... Uh, think i would like to mention him on on the podcast and thank him for for what he did and how he like taught me and stuff but that's for the next time i guess Mm -hmm. all right thanks for tuning in to the inside scoop and as always we're gonna be scooping next week (laughs) we'll be scooping our brains out (laughs) thanks guys see you